Hi guys, Skypoint here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my updated deck for Realm of the Wordbearers. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time talking through this deck, it just has a couple of changes. We took four cards out, and what we have now is a pair of Acleon Word Singers, which are one of the new Chaos cards which came out. And also, and I'm not altogether convinced by this, but I do have a pair of Apotheoses in there to try and make Realm a bit more deadly in the late game. Alright, so here's the deck. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this deck in action. We start with a fight against Conrad Kurz, the new villain of the game. Alright, looking at the cards I started with, I don't have any units to benefit, uh, who can take advantage of Terror in Reality. I've got Camille and Destiny's Hands, which are too expensive to play at first, as well as Apotheosis, which is way too expensive. So I'm putting away all the cards. And that's much better. I've got a couple of cards to play in my first and second turn. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look here. Conrad Curse does a straight up attack against me. Taking three damage, a little bit bold. Alright, let's kick this off. We're gonna go ahead and drop the Horse Occultus and try and kill Conrad Curse as before he can turn into Night Haunter. Well, that's unfortunate. That five attack guy is deal gonna deal five points of damage to me, but if I attack him, it'll only be three points of damage. So I think that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm gonna drop Ekra Tress to get some heals going. And then go ahead and attack that guy, and that heals me back for two. So I'm currently 10 points of health behind Conrad. He takes a turn to lower my attack down to one and hit me, which takes me to 11 points of health behind him. As we now enter my four energy turn, I can drop the Brotherhood, as well as trigger Ekra Trez's ability to heal me and then attack. Alright, we are 7 points of health behind Conrad now, so we're catching up there. Seek and Destroy kills the Brotherhood. And he lowers my attack and attacks me again. So we're still at 7 points of health. Okay, next turn. Hmm, that's not great. I'm gonna drop c Wreck, but that uses up all of my energy so I cannot actually attack. So let's actually throw Ekra Trez into Conrad directly. I don't. I usually don't like trying to hold on to Ekra Trez too long against Night Lords because uh, Rule of Fear tends to kill Ekra off because he only has two attack, and Rule of Fear kills anything on the board with two or less attack. Okay, look at that. This gap is starting to close up pretty nicely. I'm gonna drop the Word Singer to do a powerful attack, but I don't want that Night Lord on the board. So what I'm actually going to do is now drop Terror in Reality to send Wordbringer, uh, Wordsinger away as well as his own guy. And he quit. So you read this, the sheer aggro coming down there was too much for Conrad. So that was a really quick, fast game. And many games with um, Realm tend to be quick and fast. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at another fight. This next one is against Magnus the Red. Alright, so putting away Apotheosis, keeping the other cards because they'll be useful. Let's go. Alright, so let's bring this out. Attack for three, uh, three attack directly and drop a Righteous Seal it. Magnus goes ahead and attacks the Righteous Seal it, which spawns the Wounded Seal it. I'm just going to attack with Raum directly. And I'm going to leave the Wounded Zealot al alive. Magnus will usually try to use up his turn to attack him. Yep, perfect. Which meant he wasn't doing a Psychic Attack on me instead. Okay, we're now coming up to the 4 energy turn. Don't really have anything to buff with the Word Singer, so let's just go ahead and drop her and keep attacking him. That health gap between us is down to 4 points. Okay, an early Ashen Blow to take out my one person on the board. Hmm, Camille's nice, but let's go ahead and drop Reldred, uh, Mark of Nurgle, aka the least useful Mark. Alright, but still, that health gap is closing down nicely between us. 
Oh, so much for that health gap, health gap, right? I do have a pair of camels, but for now, I'm gonna drop the possessed marine who's immune to direct removal. And let's see what I can pull off with this. Hopefully next turn, the possessed marine hits Magnus. That damages the medic guy next to Magnus and Camille can finish off the medic. Let's see if this works. Perfect. Ah, that's a shame. All right, well, let's do this. We are going to... Ooh, actually use Archetype of Kerosene. Let's go ahead and steal his medic. Even better, right? And I just want to uh, get rid of that mortar carrier, so let's attack it with me. That also heals me up, so I took no damage. Now I have one point of health more than Magnus, and I stole his medic. Oh, alright, so he goes ahead and he attacks me with that. I am going to actually drop Malnor squad this time and get some front line going. And let's actually use up the medic to kill his people, his one unit which does three more points of damage directly to Magnus. And I can attack again. Now I've got five points more. And as I approach my 10 energy turn, theoretically I could double cameo him for a win. We'll see if that works. Okay, he's pulling out more cards. He has very little psychic energy. He's used it all up by this point. Oh, yeah, there's another uh, mortar carrier, which hits me. That's fine. I think I can take that. Ooh, a tear in reality. Let's drop the word singer. We're going to go ahead and attack Magnus. And attack Magnus again. And let's use the tear in reality on that guy to just bounce his unit back to hand. Now obviously next turn I have several ways in which I could kill him. Even if he gets precognition, I can drop two cameos on him and win. He's generating cards. I was expecting you. And okay, he goes and tries to hit the word singer. And that's it. He knows this was over at this point. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop my cameo on him. Down to one health. And attack him for the win. So again, that was a nice quick win against Magnus. And let's round off with a couple more fights. This one is a, a fight against Horus. So again, putting away my cards at the beginning. So we're going to get rid of Apotheosis and Possessed Marine. Very expensive cards. Don't need them early on, but Ekra Trez is ideal. Especially because Horus players tend to not quite have as much anti-stealth as some others. Oops, forgot to hit gun. Oh, that's a ideal opening set of cards. History will be made here. Okay, let's go with this. We're gonna attack him and drop the horse occultists. He goes ahead and creates a card in his hand, which is great. It means my horse occultists will survive long enough to do their thing. But here's Ekra Trez. Attack with the cultists, and that creates a taint of chaos. And now I can attack with me. And there we go. I'm down from 10 points of health behind him to only 6 points of health behind him. Okay, now he's going after my horse occultists. The nice thing about Realm is that little squad with 3 health, they cannot survive attacking Realm, unlike other warlords. Alright, let's drop the Brotherhood. And let's uh, go ahead and heal up myself using Ekra Trez before he gets killed. Three points of health behind Horus now. Hmm, that's interesting. Alright. So, what we're going to do here is attack Horus. Attack that guy to bounce either one of my Q cards back to my hand. Okay, bounce the Brotherhood back to my hand. Which means I can now drop c Wreck. One point of health behind him. Okay, that he used up an entire turn to just outflank c Wreck, Which actually gives me a cheap demon, although it's just Battlefly. Alright. 
So next we can drop Cephalon Squad and Battle Flies and Attack Horus again. Equal health. This blows the heart. Oh, there we go. Defense Satellites. Bye bye, Ekra Tres. Yep, he's gone. Pride of Mars. What's he getting for one energy? Okay, it's a Mechadendrite generator. And he goes ahead and hits uh, Cephalon Squad. Alright, let's drop the Brotherhood and now we can give them the Taint of Chaos which they deserve. There we go, Mark of Nurgle. Hopefully Mark of Disease. Come on. We in a Mark of Disease. No, it's a Mark of Corn on them. Alright, let's just go ahead and keep the pressure on. That's actually a healing move because I only I take one point of damage from attacking them, but I heal two points. It actually means that when you kill a unit with one health with a um, round, you actually gain health out of that. Okay, let's go ahead and poison that Pharos so it dies next turn. Drop a possessed marine so he cannot outflank it and hit him again. Now, unless he has a front line, it's over for him. Oh, it's over. Yes. Alright, now we're almost done. We just have one more match to take a look at as well. This match is against a less common Warlord. It's against Shadrach Medusin. I've got a good hand of cards to start with, so I'm going to keep it all. Let's go ahead and see how this works. I will raise the storm. I start with the initiative, which is handy. So let's drop Horsa, Cultist, and attack Shadrach. Hail in the name of the tenth. He goes ahead. He's trying to weaken the. Uh, Horsa Cultist to make sure I don't just keep spawning uh, Taints of Chaos with them. So I'm going to go ahead, attack, which creates my Taint of Chaos even though they die, and now I can drop the Brotherhood and attack him again. So now I am one point of health overall ahead of him once you factor in his Survivor 5. Okay, he's generating some kind of vehicle out of there. Often with Iron Hands, it's the high cost, high damage vehicle, so now I need to sort of win before those guys uh, come into play. Let's take his guys out over there. Hoping for a Mark of Tizinj. Ah, perfect. That's nice. Alright, let's drop a second Taint of Chaos and a Horse Occultist. So now with this, next turn they can hopefully turn into a demon if they survive. Goldstone. Goldstone in action. Oh no, they won't turn into a demon. He killed the horse occultist. That sucks. Ooh, a destiny's hand. Okay, this could get interesting. Alright, we're gonna attack over there to get rid of those guys. And play Reldred for now. Ooh, nice. They get he gets a mark of Tizinch as well. Galba squad. Alright. Ooh, and Apotheosis as well. So I've got two Taints of Chaos. But with Destiny's Hand coming into play, I have an idea. Let's go ahead and attack with all my units. And now, instead of playing a troop on the board, I can use Destiny's Hand to get myself three demons. Now the maintenance from that is going to be a little bit crippling, so that's the unfortunate side effect. Oh, the fall of Gardenal, so much for the maintenance. Okay, but I am still four points of health ahead of him. So let's go ahead and drop Malnor Squad and give them a Taint of Chaos, hoping for a Mark of Tizinch. Oh, nice, perfect. Alright, this is working out nicely, and next turn I should be able to win unless he has a front line. Frankly, even if he has one front line, I can win. Oh. Nope, that's starting to turn that, uh, get in the way of that. Okay, and there's a regular unit. Ah, but Destiny's Hand, what can I do with this? Let's go ahead and, oh, yeah, of course, there we go. With Destiny's Hand, there's enough damage to tip things so I can win. There we are, and that's over. Alright, so that was a quick set of wins with Ram, and what I really is hoping you guys can understand from that is with his high damage, how quickly Ram games can go. 
uh, try him out he's still a lot of fun a couple of players do make, try and make round work on high terror although he starts to get a little bit outclassed up there but it's still a fun thing to try out and he can certainly work for you on all the planets up to and including terra up to around i think 3500 rating and beyond that in my opinion round begins to struggle a little bit but he I, i've won what matches with him above 4000 in the past as well all right so hope you guys enjoyed that please remember to subscribe and you'll get notified whenever my next video goes up all right bye for now guys